Well, hello YouTube. Um, it's been a while, like a week or so since I've uploaded a video, I think. Um, huh, I, I'm kind of recovering from a bit of an accident that I had. Um, I was carrying an old TV outside to toss and um, kind of tripped over the cord after it fell off the top of it and um, yeah landed on my left knee with the weight of the TV and myself and um, yeah so huh, I'm, I'm still having a bit of trouble with like stairs and moving around and walking and stuff but hey um, yeah but I'm back um, and I've got a box to open well I opened it already um, I was a little impatient sorry um, anyway um, but yeah so um, let's look at what's inside not packed very well at all just the air pack I love popping these things. Well, just as long as they're not um, sitting at the bottom of my stairs at um, 1 a.m. and I happen to step on it. But anyway, let's get rid of the all two chunks of styrofoam padding. And here we oh wait wait there's three chunks sorry Let's get the box out of the way and here we have an XY tronic or possibly Zytronic um, super temp temperature controlled soldering station this is actually the first temperature controlled soldering station that I've owned or used and um, if any of you have seen my previous videos as far as a soldering pencil goes this is my <laughs> current primary soldering iron and along with a couple um, heavy duty Weller soldering guns and along with this uh, Tempmatic that I rebuilt, well, replaced the cord in a previous video. Um, and those have been sufficient for what I've done. Most of what I work on is vintage electronics where you practically need an acetylene torch to melt the solder, it seems. Um, but I figured it'd probably be good because I like to play around with smaller electronic stuff. It would be nice to have a temperature controlled soldering iron. And um, I mean, other than the Weller, the Tempmatic, which does a decent job, but it's still the gun style. It's nice to have a precision um, pencil iron every once in a while. Um, but yeah. So I picked this up actually on eBay for uh, 45 bucks uh, free shipping. There were two of them offered. There was this one and there was a, um, oh, I forget the model, but it's basically the same thing, but it was an ESR model or something, which I'm guessing has something to do with um, electrostatic um, dissipation that it can actually, um, it's not, it won't damage sensitive components. Anyway, this was originally from um, Comer or Comer Audiovisual Repair in Bangor, California. Um, so anyway, nice squeaky feet on there. But um, but yeah, like I said, I've taken this apart. I've already tried it out. It does work. Uh, it works fairly well, actually. Um, it's not bang on as far as the temperature goes. Uh, it, it fluctuates around a bit, but hey, this is an 
older model. It's not really a high-end model. Uh, weighs a fair amount. Um, the actual iron, um, well, this, this blue thing here, this blue grip is cracked and it's pretty crusty. The actual um, video of it, or not video of it, the auction showed the tip looked like it was rusted, so I figured I'd need to get new tips for it, uh, which I'm probably still gonna do because this this is a fairly large tip. Um, but, and typical unthread that, the sleeve comes off and the tip comes out like that. Um, tips for these can be found on eBay, fairly cheap. Um, but yeah, but it looked like the tip was all rusted, but I heated it up and cleaned it off with a damp towel and it came out pretty close to perfect. Um, but anyway, this, this blue thing is gonna, it just slides on there, that's gonna go. I, I prefer the, I'm used to this iron here with the small, um, grip on it, so I, I think that this will be sufficient. I've, all, as I've said, I've already tested this, and, um, it does, it doesn't, doesn't heat up to the point where you actually need that blue thing on there. So I'm not sure exactly why that's like that. The, um, this is a little flaky. It needs tightened up and secured. It was originally on the other side. This just slides in here. And, um, yeah. Um, I was thinking about doing a teardown on this, but it's just going to be a linear transformer in there, nothing special, and a little bit of uh, control circuitry for it. So, yeah, probably not going to do that unless there's requests to do it. Um, but, yeah, standard uh, four pin threaded um, connector on there. Oh, wait, five pin threaded connector. Uh, assumingly, two for power and um, two for temperature sense. I'm not sure what possibly a ground for the fifth pin. Um, let's see if I can tighten this thing up so it doesn't keep flopping around. Um, but yeah, so not a bad deal, I think, anyway. Um, but it has the read and set switch, which is um, for um, set is you set your temperature what you want it, and then read is what the actual temperature of the iron is. And there's also, there's the light for the heater, there's the readout, and um, temperature lock, which I'm not sure what that is. I'm thinking that's just a set screw that um, kind of locks the potentiometer in place. Um, there's supposed to be a sponge here, and here's just the little tray, and um, yeah, but I'll, I'll end up cutting a sponge here, power switch on the side, um, there's our little label on the bottom, 3 amp fuse in here, push, and it, I don't know if that's supposed to come out or, or what, but it, it doesn't come out. Um, or maybe it only comes out if the fuse is blown, which doesn't seem to make sense. There's a indent here for 120 volt and 220 volt selection which is is not there and um, you can see the bottom of the transformer through the housing here but uh, input 120 volt heater 20 volt 24 volt 60 watt um, 200 to 878 degrees Fahrenheit 
and uh, continuously adjustable. Uh, made in Taiwan. I'm not sure how old this unit is. Looking at it, it looks to be 80s, early 90s. Um, the other unit that I was looking at was black. They were both the same price. I chose not to buy the other unit. Um, actually, it even still has a the plastic um, protect the little peel off plastic on the display here um, but I didn't choose to get the other one because it was it read the temperature out in Celsius or centigrade or whatever you want to call it um, I'm in the US I'm used to Fahrenheit so I picked up this one um, maybe that's my loss maybe the other unit had additional features but again, the other unit also didn't seem, they didn't show a picture of the uh, tip, I don't think, on that one. So, anyway, let's uh, plug this thing in, turn it on. And it, it does heat up pretty fast. Uh, we'll just set it on here. Set temperature is 317 degrees. So we'll put on read and fire it up. Why it shows negative, I'm not sure. Um, probably just um, below the sensor. It's below the range of the electronics in here. But it does heat up fairly quickly. I mean, for an older unit like this, it's not not a very high powered, but um, what did we set it at? 324, and as you can see now, the heater is starting to cycle. And as I said, it's a constant read, so it does fluctuate as it's reading. Um, We'll set it to two fifty. Try to. It's it's a little as you can see, even on the set, it's not precise. So but anyway, we get a little bit of solder and just and it doesn't immediately boil away the solder like my other iron does. It actually melts the solder and um, the and um, instead of just like sizzling everything away. Now, um, this I actually used this iron when I was putting the Casio calculator back together. So, as I said, I've already had it out and I've tested it and used it and it does work. And it works fairly well too. So, um, any small electronics projects or anything that I'm working on, um, this is what I will be using and probably going to be my primary soldering iron um, Unless I need something of a little bit higher power like when I'm uh, working on um, Rebuilding the older equipment, but anyway, there we go. It's a uh, super temp XY tr or Zytronic super temp temperature controlled soldering station Thanks for watching